What is up, my gamer guys, gals, and non-binary pals? I, like many people, recently finished watching The Last of Us, an original HBO Max series, official audio companion available wherever you get your podcasts. And like any respectable white nerdy dude on the internet, I have some opinions about it. I have some thoughts. Um, and they're mostly positive, and I, I don't think that that's, that's a controversial take by any means. Um, as far as video game adaptations go, it's probably the best one that we have available. But I feel like saying that is sort of like saying relative to feces, Burger King is pretty good, right? It's a low bar to step over. I mean, like, what video game adaptations do we really have other than the Resident Evil movies, Doom with Dwayne The Rock Johnson which I assume is great. I haven't seen it. It's probably the best. Um, and some other ones that I'll put on screen, maybe. Right? It's slim pickings. Um, and I think The Last of Us, as a lot of people have already mentioned, had a lot going for it because the game that it's modeling, the game that it's adapting, is pretty much a TV show with gameplay in between. Um, it, I, I, Neil Druckmann, uh, God bless him, um, kind of asked the bold question, what if I made an HBO Max original series, The Last of Us, official audio companion available wherever you get your podcasts, uh, and then put some gameplay in between that where you shoot some zombies and stab some zombies and shoot some people and stab some people and uh, grow close to a, a small child. Um, it's great. We loved it. America loved it. We were crazy for it. We were nuts for it. They've released the game like 20 times. Um, it's great. I like how big gruff man have emotion and how small girl have also emotion, but different. And then their emotions come together and, and they're better for it. But at what cost? It's all great. Um, and I think for the most part, um, the production design, the writing, the directing, the performances, I mean, it's all great. Nobody did a bad job here, um, <laughs> to be clear. Uh, but I feel like it fell short in some key areas. And ironically, as much as people like to meme that The Last of Us was already a movie or already a TV show, my, myself included, um, there were a lot of moments that just did not hit the way that they did in the game because you aren't playing a video game. You're watching a show. And I feel like the show, ironically, kind of shot itself in the foot by not taking longer by not making the first game like two seasons. I was really surprised that they crammed everything into one season. Like, what's the rush, guys? You have like a veritable cash cow on your hands. Take your time. And and I feel like the show suffered for it. I, I really do. Um, there are numerous moments, um, spoilers for the entire show slash game, by the way. There are entire moments that really don't smack as hard as they smack in the game um, because you haven't had, you know, 12 in-game hours or whatever in between these cutscenes, or depending on how long you took to play the game. I uh, went through it very slowly as I was quite scared and quite bad at video games. Uh, but maybe you're a speedrunner and, and none of this is, is going to be as relevant. But there are some moments, especially regarding Ellie, um, in the aftermath of her encounter with the creepy uh, cannibal rapist, uh, David, where Joel tries to interact with her and she doesn't respond in the way that she normally does. And they reproduce that in the show. But it really doesn't hit the way that it does in the game. Because in the game, you've been having these interactions with Ellie back and forth for hours and hours and hours that you've just been, you know, fully invested in the whole time. You're not jumping to different characters' narratives. You're not having a whole episode dedicated to a side character's backstory. Which, don't get me wrong, episode three, Ron Swanson and the gay hotel manager from White Lotus season one absolutely ripping out our hearts. Look, I was there for it. I loved it. But it takes away from what the core of the show is, which is... Uh, Joel and Ellie, um, the core of the story anyway. Um, and so when you have these moments, um, I can think of one in particular that actually motivated me to, to sit to sit down in this chair and hold a microphone and make this video um, that just completely fell flat. Um, and it really felt to me like, oh, this, I don't know that the writers understand that we this isn't this this isn't the video game. You can't just copy everything over. Um, and that is there's a moment where, Joel goes to boost Ellie up and she doesn't come to him to be boosted up. Now, in the game, you've boosted Ellie up on ledges like a hundred times at this point. It's it's a rote, you know, quick time event that you've done so many times. So when she doesn't come, 
that is a real narrative moment breaking through gameplay. And that's really impactful. It's a huge moment in, in the game um, and kind of in showing where uh, Ellie's mental state is, though it's not exactly a stretch to say that she might be affected by, you know, almost being eaten slashed. You know, we don't really need to talk about the, the, the specifics of it all. And they reproduce that moment in the show. But in the show, and I could be wrong about this, and feel free to correct me down below, I don't know that Joel boosted Ellie up anywhere ever. Like, maybe once? I don't, I don't know. I don't remember for sure, so this whole point might be disproven, but the, I, I feel like even if he did do it a couple times, it's such minor moments in the show that I feel like by the time you get to that moment, you, you've been kind of run roughshod through so many crazy things happening so quickly, so close together, which again is another pacing thing that I felt like the show could have benefited from having two seasons, but it, it just doesn't... It didn't resonate for me personally at all. Um, I, I'm really interested to hear from people that haven't played the game and did watch the show how they felt. And similarly, the ending fell really flat, like really flat for me. Um, and it's they listen, they faithfully reproduced the end quite well. Joel goes on a killing rampage and gets Ellie out of there and lies to her face about it selfishly. Good job. We can all go home. 10 out of 10 video game. But I really, I don't know, when playing the game and massacring an entire hospital full of people, uh, people always kind of talk about that as really breaking the immersion for them because it's such a weird video gamey moment in a game that is otherwise pretty dedicated to telling a grounded story. I always kind of rationalize it that, like, you're not actually killing that many people. It's just, you know, it's a video game. You're going to do what you're going to do. But, like, now in the show, he really does kill that many people. And it does kind of feel like a hairpin turn. I, I don't know. I don't know. I just left me feeling bleh about the whole thing. Which is a bummer because I feel like, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, they really nail it in, like, every other regard. Like... I was not sold at all on Pedro Pascal as Joel. Not that I think he's a bad actor. I think he's a great actor. Um, but I just didn't think he... I just didn't think of him as Joel at all. But he... I almost like him better than Troy Baker um, as Joel. He really nailed it. Aside from the the I Reckon bits, they, they threw in a couple I Reckon lines in there that just did not... Pedro Pascal can never be an I Reckon guy. I don't, I don't know. It just doesn't work. Um, but, yeah. Bella Ramsey... Um, fucking nailed it again i feel like she captured ellie in her own way and really did it justice um everybody did great performances were awesome writing was great i'm glad they stuck with um the original composer um of the game and, and kind of used that musical theme heavily because it really does so much in in conveying that world and um bringing back the nostalgia brain tickles of ooh i recognize the thing i remember the thing i know what that is but yeah there were just some moments that don't work as well the david scene as well when joel uh, gets to ellie uh right as she you know finishes disposing of david so to speak they didn't linger on that very long like I thought they would. I mean, I, I mean, I understand they don't, you can't spend forever in that emotional moment, but like, it was literally like, hey, it's me, I got you, I got you, and then they walk away. Whereas in the game, I feel like it is much longer and, and also much more relevant that like, Joel grabs Ellie while she's doing it. Like, he gets her right in the action of it. Whereas in the show, he gets her after she walks out. And like, that seems like such a small change, but narratively, that hits way different. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's, 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 I think in the game, that's like the emotional pinnacle of like, oh, Ellie can really trust Joel. And Joel is uh, kind of giving in to this fatherly feeling or, or this protective feeling that I think he's been fighting for a lot of the game. And they both kind of just collapse into each other. And when Joel says, I got you, baby girl, it's a callback to what he called his daughter. You know, they do that in the show as well, but it just doesn't hit the same way. Um, and I think I think it's, yeah, it's mostly a pacing issue for me. Um, you know, uh, dragging the first game into two seasons, I feel like maybe you get into some territory where, like, things just get too drawn out. But I also felt like there was 
whole sections of the game that they really kind of zoom through that you could have taken, you know, a little bits, uh, could have taken more time on. Um, because the whole thing that the show is hinging on is Joel and Ellie's relationship. And ironically, I don't feel like they spent enough time just with them having conversations and having those moments. I, I feel like weirdly there just wasn't enough of that. I would have to rewatch it, I think, ultimately, to to feel really confident about that. But this is just kind of first impressions, buzzwords. I'm trying to ride some sort of wave. I don't know. I just wanted to make this video and talk about it and hear what other people think. Because I have some friends that are watching it that haven't played the games. Um, and I haven't really gotten their full opinions that they're not done. Um, so I figure I would toss the Frisbee to the internet um, and hope that they don't toss it back at my head too hard. So overall... Yeah, like a 7 out of 10 if I had to give it a number rating. Everybody did gangbusters, um, but in relation to the game, it just there are really key moments that just kind of fell flat, um, and, and that's a bummer. I also don't know how, what the hell they're going to do with Season 2. I mean, I, I assume that if Druckmann's involved, it's just going to be The Last of Us 2, but man, that's going to be a much harder story to like get people on board with and... and the the narrative is a much much more convoluted kind of theme i mean ultimately it's the theme of revenge and murder violence bad love good let shit go and and love instead of hate um but like the path it takes to get there is like much less you know straightforward and immediately understandable than the dynamic of man lose daughter man find girl man uh, start to eventually like girl and now they're like father and daughter like very understandable we see where it's going but we're along for the ride and it's a compelling ride and, and we love that um so yeah i don't know that's it did you like the last of us i liked it not as much as i could but i enjoyed it quite a bit how about that for some nuance on the internet um any last words from the dogs Well said. Thanks for sitting down with me, hanging out with me and the dogs, listening to me ramble about uh, some uh, characters in an HBO show uh, slash video game. And uh, thanks for hanging out. You could have chosen anybody on the whole dang internet, but you chose me and my two dogs. And I think that's really fucking sick. If you like listening to me talk at length about whatever, uh, I have a Patreon. You can give me money for almost nothing in return. And uh, you know what? That's not true. You know what you get in return? A smile. Thanks. I appreciate that. And everyone who's still doing that. You rock. Uh, I have a bigger video coming soon um, that is kind of unlike anything I've ever done. Um, I'm going to hype it up a bunch right now and probably never release it. But hey, here it is. Uh, get hype. Question mark. Um, yeah. Anyway, until then, I'll see you the next time I see you. My name's Dan. That's Lincoln Frank. We love you very much. Take care of yourself. Hang in there. And we'll see you when we see you.